second battle for the Philippines in World War II was going to be fought under entirely different circumstances than the first time. Again, America and Japan had blocked horns over the strategic islands. But this time, the United States and its huge armada would be the aggressor. It is considered a turning point in World War II, the Battle of Leyte Gulf over four days in October of 1944, allowed the Allies to retake control of the Philippines from Japan. More than 200,000 naval personnel took part in the battle. Historians believe it to be the largest naval confrontation in world history. The U.S. Navy lost seven ships, including the USS Johnston, which had been unseen by human eyes for nearly 80 years. Until this week, David Martin has the story. At 20,000 feet, visibility is very limited, even with a spotlight. But that whole number leaves no doubt. This is the wreck of the destroyer USS Johnston, 75 years after it went down in the last great naval battle of World War II. The Johnston is one of the most uh, famous wrecks in all of naval history. Operating a submersible with an unlimited diving depth, Victor Vescovo found the Johnston four miles beneath the Philippine Sea, the deepest wreck ever discovered, much deeper than the Titanic. We kept going deeper and deeper and deeper into the black. Then out of the murk, we could just slowly see the bow. What was that moment like? Oh, my goodness. The guns of the ship were still pointed in the proper direction of where they were firing when they went down. The ship still looked like it was fighting, like it just still hadn't given up. The entire crew either went down with the ship or scrambled off just before it sank. 186 sailors died. All of those in the battle that were lost, the remains were never located. Warren Sterling's uncle Elton was the Johnston's executive officer. So have you ever found out exactly how he perished? They were in the water for 52 hours before being picked up. Seems like he swam off and either he drowned or a shark got him. The wreckage will remain untouched, but its discovery has brought to the surface the astonishing story of the USS Johnston. It's one of the most valiant actions in the entire history of the United States Navy. Retired Admiral Samuel Cox, director of the Naval History Command, has known the story of the Johnston since he was a little boy. I was into naval history before I could read, looking at pictures in my dad's books. So I knew the story of Ernest Evans, the commander of the Johnston. He was a childhood hero of mine. Everybody should know the story of Commander Ernest Evans and his actions at the Battle of Leyte Gulf. Evans was the first Native American to be awarded a Medal of Honor in the United States Navy. General Douglas MacArthur had just waded ashore in the Philippines as the U.S. closed in on Japan. And the Johnston was part of a naval force protecting MacArthur's supply ships. On the morning of the 25 October 1944, that force was surprised by a vastly superior Japanese force that was able to get through a strait undetected during the night and show up uh, unexpected. This is an artist's depiction of the Johnston as Commander Evans led the charge against the Japanese armada. It was four battleships, eight cruisers, and 11 destroyers. And without waiting for orders, uh, he turned and took his ship and charged that entire Japanese force uh, and was able to put a torpedo in the lead Japanese cruiser. That sounds like a, uh, a suicide charge. If he didn't do something, the Japanese were going to overrun and sink the entire force. Then they're into General MacArthur's supply ships and troop transports. So what's at stake here is MacArthur's return to the Philippines? Essentially, yes, sir. For a few desperate hours off the Philippine island of Samar, Evans and his ship were in the Japanese bullseye. The first hits basically killed multiple people on the bridge. Uh, so he's trying to fight this battle while standing in dead bodies and body parts. He's had two of his fingers torn off, and yet he still has to maintain the presence of mind to continue to, to fight that ship. But the Japanese guns were too big and too many. Johnston is dead in the water and crippled, and these Japanese destroyers are just firing round after round after round into the ship. And finally, Johnston sinks, uh, and one of the Japanese commanding officers was observed to actually salute the U.S. ship as it went down. What happened to Evans? Evans was uh, last seen uh, going into the water as the ship sank, uh, and then never seen again. So how does the battle end? 
and the Japanese commander turns away. He's on a do or die mission, yet he turned back. It was one of the most brave last stands of a naval vessel in history, or true David and Goliath battle. And the largest naval battle ever fought on this planet. The Johnston is a burial ground as sacred as Arlington National Cemetery. Before Victor Vescovo left, he paid final tribute to Commander Ernest Evans and the men who followed him into battle. To the Johnson. For CBS This Morning Saturday, David Martin, the Pentagon. Story we were all saying, I, I didn't at, know. Until yeah, now. and at 21,000 feet, four miles down, that's almost twice as deep as the Titanic. Yeah, it sounds like landed. a battle that truly changed the war. Yeah. Just, Worth remembering. Oh.